And there is actually a rule you can't hold a piece of glass the size of a desires the rest of the And if you were really eating that, and hold it, I would put my kids in the machine and started cutting up their pizza. I called the Rebbe. I said, what are you turning with, my kids in With all of those rules, how did Ralph Papa ever get to be so popular? Yeah. How, did, how could that be? Uh, a lot of little pieces. <laughs> it was glandular. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> no, he, I mean, they, they weren't they didn't over it. I mean, they were a lot. That woman, she liked it. She had a glandular. Uh, what's the matter? I don't know. It's I long. Could, she liked it. That's an open. If one of the ladies are in the office, she should yeah, be. Yeah, she's not sure. Okay. Let me start off with the um, okay. Okay. Are you going to the scene? Everyone's going to ride tomorrow. Tomorrow. Not today. <laughs> uh, learning sponsors. A year of learning Isaac and Evelyn Blackhorn, memory of his sister Chai Rachel Bas Isser. Friends of Leonie Meisum and Leia Sabra Bas Chanuk Zumba. <clears throat> Friends of Malaskotsky, Moshe Zelig Ben Mordecha. Martin Lipman and family, in memory of his wife, Malka Chana Bas <clears throat> <clears throat> Friends of Herb Jeremiah Tzvi Ben Zaev. Friends of Sam Coleman Shmuel Ben Yaakov. Friends of Gideon Lazinski Mordechai Shlomo Ben. A month of learning Mel and Heron Haller in memory of his mother Fega Bas Yaakov. V. Pizer in memory of her stepfather Avram Michal Ben Shmuel Halevi. Jill and Perry Meltzer in memory of her father Yaakov Ben Yosef. Andrea and David Domi in memory of her mother, Edel Tzinabat Shimshon, friends and students of Rabbi Shalom Kornblum, Rav Shalom ben Mordechai, Aaron and Mel Haller, in memory of her father, Yosef Eliezer ben Tzvi Hirsch, Mark Sher, in memory of his father, Mordechai ben Menachem Manish, Mark Linder, in memory of his nephew, Eretz Paul ben Sirlos, a week of learning by Kayla Haino, in memory of her father, Chaim Yehuda Lei ben Betzalel, Susan Fuchter Kramer and Shelley Kramer, in memory of her mother, Bela Bat Yeshaya. Today is the uh, 29th of the month, and we have one day of learning by Donald Press, in memory of his mother in law, Chaya Chasha Bas Tzvi Zev. May the Shamas have an Aliyah, Crank Rafiel, Dalt Yeshira Shamataliyah, and Rachel Bene Israel, a good Gaben Shtia. Amen. Okay. okay. I'd like us to start back on the bottom of Samach Dalit Amud Beis with the Mishnah. Just real quickly, we'll go through it one more time quick and then we'll go into the next material. Okay. I, uh, we pointed out very quickly, all right, that the Mishnah began, right? Hamotzi uh, made betchila, that one, it's the first encounter, okay, with a corpse, in a sense, in a particular place, very first time, okay? The concern may be about reinterment, okay? If we keep that concept in mind, it will help us understand what's, why the, uh, What's going on here? Has anyone ever participated in that kind of a situation besides Michael and myself? Okay. I know someone who knew how that is. Stuck up a body because you're, you're buried in the Jewish cemetery and it's not Jewish. They have to take it off. Okay. Well, well that's what? Well, if it's so off, you have a note stating that. that you're, you're, no, no. I, I was asked to be an aide once with someone else, with another Rav 
for the, you know, to supervise the reinterments. And that was one case. And the second case I had, okay, which was in a synagogue cemetery where, um, I guess the best way to say it is that they buried the body in the wrong kever, in the wrong location. They buried it in, in the right place, but in the wrong row. Wrong. Okay. That, that's a real problem. I'm not disagreeing. really not supposed to move it. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. Got to get the shush from that. That's right. That's right. So I've had, I had two practical, I had two practical experiences in that situation, in two different communities. Okay. So my point is, that's why I said the issue of reinterment, okay, where the Gentile art scrolls notes point out to us that it's not an issue. Okay. With a Jew, it is a major issue. Okay. It depends whether you're going to make the assumption that the burial is temporary, okay, or not. I, I did have one other experience, which we'll talk about another time. But I want to emphasize the fact that, that while we're learning Gemara, and these things may seem at times theoretical, they are really not just theoretical. Yeah, everything is temporary, because you believe in Kriya Samesi. Well, that's true, but that isn't the direct application but here. But then you, the body gets disinterred on its own. Right. Here we're That's, talking about the Hey, Okay. So I wanted to just emphasize that as, part, as we go through now. Okay, so for a single grave, the implication is first discovered. The assumption seems to be that it was temporary and therefore could be re what? It's a tahayim. Okay. So what it's happens? It's not a real cemetery. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to get. Okay. Mushkav Kedarko. And that's understandable as we answered Sid's question yesterday, that the body is in the kever in a certain manner, the legs stretched out, the hands crossed over the body. Otherwise, we're going to see the eventually the Gemara is going to tell us some other situations. And I point out quickly, if you look at 64B3, note number 27 in Art Scroll, okay, that has further details. Okay? This, is, this is a very common error to show when they start to dig a new project and they find... Oh, that's another whole issue, right. That's all right. True. That's basically what we're talking about. Okay. Right. All right. So what happens? Note low, et fusato, says our mission. You remove the... The, the let's call it the skeleton, the bones, and the surrounding earth along with it. Remember, we had Mishnaya that talked about the whole question of if other things got mixed in with the earth. This is going to come back again in this Gemara as well. Okay? All right, let's go on. Shnayim, what if he finds two graves? Not one, that fusatam. Again, okay, you remove the bones, the structure and the surrounding earth, okay? How much surrounding earth we're going to get to in the Gemara as well, okay? Matzah Shlosha, they find three, okay? And if you are using art scroll, you have diagrams, okay? All right, Ruvain, do they provide diagrams there too? They do, okay. All right, Matzah Shlosha. It's better than what we have. Okay. Okay. So if the question is if it's this or this, okay. Right. May arba amod faad shmona. Okay. So if the distance, the the farthest amount, okay, from one grave, from the first grave to the third grave, third grave, okay, and if it's distance based on between four and eight amos, okay? And the art scroll definition there shows you through the diagram, okay, that, okay, that uh, the basically, the, how close they would bury, okay? All right, all right, I'm out at Shmona. Hare zo shkunat kivarot. 
we would call Shkunat Kivarot a cemetery. Okay, that's the point. All right, let's go on to the top now of today. Bodek Hemenu Ulahalan Esrim Amma. Once one has discovered the three, okay, uh, locations, I'll put it that way, that within that close proximity, okay, one has to continue their search even further. Okay, and you're going to have to search in a number of directions. Okay, well, that's why I say a number of directions. Okay, why is that the case? Because the assumption is, okay, that the way, in, that's another diagram in Art Sprawl, that you have what I'm going to call, so to speak, a central plaza area. Okay, and then off of those would be the burial location. Okay, the crypt, exactly. All right. Matza echad, the sof esrimama. If they find one, this is still our Mishnah. Okay, at the end of the 20, bode kimenu ulahalan esrimama. Then you have to continue your search and examination. That's why we said in all directions. Okay, to see where, how this, how that. Uh, Cemetery. How the cemetery location was laid out. Okay. All right. Shereglayim ledavar. Because we say that there can be clear proof to that effect. She'ilu tchila matzo. Why? Because were it such initially that you had found that first one, not lova et fusato, okay, that you could have just removed it and the earth, earth, the surrounding earth along with it. But since that's not the case, you found multiple graves. Okay, and the question is, two is one thing, but three clearly tells us that there has got to be uh, something more there. Okay, that's the basic understanding of the mission. Okay, now we go on with the Gemara. Okay, because so there's a difference between initially discovering an isolated grave, okay, versus multiple graves. This is your okay. Wow, this is your point. Right, okay. Amar Rav is Rav Yehuda, Matza Parat Lamatsu. Okay, one thing is, was the fact that it was found in the past as opposed to, okay. The fact that you found it now. Yeah. Excludes the possibility that it was as, as opposed to a, a past. Okay. Matsa, Prat Matsui, again, that fact that it was there, okay, as opposed to having been much earlier. Okay, mate, all right, Prat Laharug. So again, we have another, okay, that it's a corpse that died naturally, as opposed to somebody who had been killed directly. Mushkav how it's laid out, so to speak, pratly shave, with the exception that the, 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 in the kever, the body is found, the, the bones are found in a sitting position or a bending over position, okay? So in other words, that would clearly indicate that it would not be a Jewish uh, person, okay? Now that comes back again, Sid, to your question from yesterday. Kidarko. Okay, and again, even further now, Sid, in, a, in its appropriate manner, okay, which is we're going to, I'm going to emphasize that there was clearly a difference between how Jews buried and non Jews, okay. Prat l'shel rosho munach ben yerechotav, as opposed to the head located down by the hip area. Okay. holding the body up. That's, well, that could be the similar to Yoshev, or even more so, okay, bento. Do we know if that's the case today? No, okay. it's not. Um, Let's see. Okay, in terms of how Gentiles bury? No, generally... We it's, have to use coffin and they lay it out. Like it's, still, it's still complete. It's a straight, okay. But, but if you look at the archeological proof from the past, you do see that, that uh, certain societies uh, vary different, not there in that manner. There's also space issues. Right, could be, okay. Tani, all right. 
So what happens? We go on. Tani ula bar chanina etan. Mate shechaser. Okay, if we have a uh, corpse that's lacking body parts. Okay, what happens? Aim lo tfusa velo shkunat kvarot. In that case, we say we, we not, and it's going to be a question of reinterment. We're not dealing with the necessity of taking the earth, or we don't consider it a cemetery. Okay, the cholhani maitamalo, and all of these. Why? What's the reason not? Amrinan, because we say Dilma obeyed kochavimu, that perhaps that body belonged to a gentile. Okay, let's go on. We'll come back, into, back to our Mishnah. What about finding two graves initially? Okay. All right. Matzah shnayim. Rosho shel zeh, but sad margalotav shel zeh. Rosho shel zeh, but sad margalotav shel zeh. Okay. So the two graves, one has head going one way and to feet, and then the ne grave next to it has the head opposite the feet of the other one and the body stretch that way. That's also a okay, so that everybody have that. Uh, why art school didn't uh, give a diagram like that? Well, okay, so that's the, all right, so what happens? Again, in terms of issue of reinterment, there is no requirement to take the the earth, surrounding earth, and even in that situation as well, we do not say that it's a clear cemetery. Now we're back to our primary case of the, right? Three graves, or three crypts. Okay, one was known, and the two were found the first for the first time. Okay, oh, shnayim tchila, ushnayim yidu. Okay, or we have two that were discovered at the first time and two that were known. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, we're, we're, come, we're gonna come back to that. You're right, but I wanna bring it in in a moment. Okay, ein lehem tfusa, the ein lehem shkunat kvaro. They do, one does not need to take the earth. And it is not considered an actual cemetery. Okay, so what we, we've got to remember is that number one, it's possible that they buried people by the side of the road, as Michael was suggesting. It's also possible that the whole reason that that the practice of having some sort of monument or stone or marker a matseva was basically to to uh, Remind Kohanim, don't come here. Don't step close to this. Did they do that ordinarily? Not necessarily. Always. Okay. It's Jewish. Okay. If it was Jewish, okay. But did they do it on a regular? Not necessarily. Well, because there's no tumor so held well by a non-Jew. That's so true, but problem. that's still the point. Okay. What? In what other if, words, what if you find a grave where the Jews and uh, Goyim buried together, like? I mean, in, in the like old Russia, the, where they were drafted, the Jews were sent out with the Goyim fighting, and they may have been killed. So they're buried together with the Goyim. So then, they, then if you find three Jewish graves, three Jewish a, graves, a grave, that, that's, um, that's, that's a done. that's a a Jewish section of a cemetery. Yeah, in so that case, always... no, like in in uh, yeah. in the cemeteries in France from the wars. Yeah. They, they did not have a Catholic and a Jewish. No, they, they didn't. Just, well, everybody was buried. They buried in so line. these rules would apply. If the Jewish graves are close enough together, you would not be able to reinter. Reinter, that's the question. I, mean, we, I know of cases where the family wanted to bring the soldier home. Yeah. And, uh, and they got rabbis from Paris to go and check out the right. cemetery. And they said they could not. Right. Okay. I also, that was uh, another Shaila I once had about somebody who's, who was fleeing uh, the Nazis. And on the way out of Germany, they were in 
either, I think they were in France at the time and a family member died, they buried them there. And then the question was asked, could they well, then that was reenter? The at least the, in the intent, intent. The intent was ultimately to, to re reenter. To restore right. the so that was why it was a lot easier situation. Maaseh Berebi Yeshavav, again, a situation to try to clarify the statement with a story. All right? Shabadak umatsa shnayim yiduin ve'echad chila, where Rabbi Yeshavav was examining, and he found two known graves and one uh, brand no. new, unknown, right? Ubikesh la'asotan shkunat kivarot. Okay, and he wanted to establish this as a valid Jewish cemetery location. Amarla Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva responds, Ko sheyegata l'rik yegata. All your efforts are to no avail. Okay, why? Lo amru shkunat kivarot, because the practice to, de to designate it as a clear Jewish burial location, ele l'shlosh yiduin, Okay, so that would be the case, that it would be three that were known or three that were first discovered together initially. Okay, we now come back to our Mishnah. Not lan ve'et fusatan. Okay, we said that one would gather up the bones and the surrounding earth. Okay, and I, we pointed out, we had some discussion quickly the other day, but now the Gemara is gonna tell us in more detail Okay, how much earth has to be collected? Okay, we we'll go on. Hechi dami tfusa. Okay, how do we understand? Okay, that that we that there is this requirement to take surrounding earth. After all, we did have previous uh, gemara that told us if certain things got mixed, that's a this different issue. Okay, Amar Rav Yehuda, so Rav Yehuda, Amar Kra, based on a Pasuk, Vinesatani Mimitzrayim. Okay, when uh, they were asked to take Yosef's bones and remove it, okay, and bring it back up, right? Namely, Tol Imi. Okay, it means take something along with me. What would be taking along with me? Earth, where the word is. Okay, okay, that's what I mean. The kama she urt fusa, and how much is the the amount, right? Peresh Rabbi Eliezer, he calling the Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Tzadik. No, 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 it's Rabbi. It, 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 We're going to have a difference of opinion as to who well, said it. Rabbi Tzadamira and Rabbi Eliezer is a Tana, right? So different explanation as who actually said. No tail afar tichuach. One takes the soft earth. And then you dig down an additional three fingers. Worth. Okay. Now, being challenged. What about the following? And how much is this uh, measurement of uh, surrounding earth? Okay. So here the question again of a different. Now it's the tape. Right, individual, no tail et hakusmin, the et haksatsot. Okay, we take uh, what I'll call for the moment the chips of wood that may have come from the coffin, okay, and the lumps of earth that may have been moistened, moistened by bodily fluids. Okay, that's the implication, right? But what happens? Vizorek et ha. Vada'im, and we throw aside those certain items that clearly are not from the body. Umaniach et hasveikot, okay, and we leave that which is questionable. Vahasha, no. Umaniach et hasveikot. I know it sounds like, but it, what it means is if there's any doubt about a, a section of earth, whether or not it's got juices in it from the body, you put, that goes it. with the body. Yeah. No, certainly goes that in. which from, is from the body is taken. Correct. That, that which is, is not from the body like stones 
is, leave is you leave behind. There's That's the point. Take it with the okay. Mitztare. I had a case in Catherine where a rabbi himself and got killed early in the morning. His blood was all over the stone. They held up the stone and they buried it with him. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's different situation. That stone now, the blood dried up in the stone. So if they removed They would have to move them. They yeah. would have to move the stone together with it. Yeah. yeah. In that situation, right? Okay. My uh, my nephew in Israel just attended had been, uh, when he was serving, actually he served as among the Tzan Khanim, the paratroopers. And then very quickly afterwards, when they gave him Miluim, okay, they had him part of a Hevra Kadisha, okay? And uh, when you're part of that in the army, it means part of your role is that uh, if there is soldiers that are killed, you have to deal with There's this material. That's a different group. But they take, you know. Yeah, no, but that's that's a regular, like uh, ambulance, et cetera, et cetera, Zaka. No, but this is a military. I'm, what I point out is that these guys, you know, after a battle, they have to go out and uh, do this, this and particular thing. The and they follow the halacha twist. Okay. All right, Vahashar Mitzare, Larov Binyano Shome. Okay, and the rest is all connected to the majority part of the skeleton of the deceased. Ularova Atzamot, or for the certain uh, the amount, amount of bones that that's minimum shear. Okay, right. Ulamalo Teravad Rakev. And also if there's a ladle full of or that amount of that which is, that's a problematic okay. one as we learned earlier that there's any right well we mentioned that right if it's mixed who the amar ki hai tana why because he's saying according to a another tana the tanya who taught the kama shiot fusa and what is the measurement of this surrounding earth amar rabbi yochanan mishum ben aza in the name of rabbi ben aza no tail afar tichuach, one takes again the soft earth, the chofer and digs into the barren earth, shalosh etzpaot, three uh, fingers. So yeah, okay, so that's the point. Bode came in, what about searching around? Okay, Amar Rabba, top of the next Am. Badak ufana, badak ufana, badak veshka. Okay, what happens here? He searches and finds something and removes. Searches and finds and removes. Searches, right? And finds. And finds. Now, so he's found what? How Three. many? Three corpses, but right? two have already okay. been removed. So what happens? Two have been removed, and now we've come to the third one. And now our text goes on. Lo hai mefane le gabe hinech tre. Okay, that third one cannot be put with the other two. Velohani tre legabe hai chad. Okay, and the those two cannot be put with that words, that one. Returned. You cannot take the two and bring it to the one, or the one and bring it to the two. Okay. Unless you're a contractor. Ike da amre, and there are those who phrase this in another way. Amar Rava says in, it fo in the following manner, Kevan shenat na reshut lifno. Since permission was given to remove, in other words, to reinter, mifane lahom. Okay, that is able to re re to reinter, to remove them. Okay, so the Gemara now, what? So that's the question. It's now what was right. uh, determined to be official grave. Right. So the Gemara raises now an explanation, question and exclamation. But why isn't it declared, okay, clearly then a, a Jewish cemetery area? Amar Reish Lakish, he says as follows, Ila 
matsu v'tiharu eretz Yisrael. Okay, that we take the, I wasn't comfortable, they use the word pretext. Say again? They use the word pretext. Okay. okay, both not just art scroll, but other translations as well. Okay, they use this as a pretext to declare the land of Israel tahar. In other words, they, they give themselves they give them cut, cut so themselves some slack. slack. Yeah, That's yeah. what the point is. They yeah. cut themselves some yeah. slack in order to say, we do it nevertheless. This is an explanation of the Ika de Amre that oh, gives yeah. themselves some slack so that the Kohanim don't have to worry in Eretz Yisrael. Right. Okay. All right. So now this, this Ika de Amre disagrees with, with the what the earlier statement of them. Them pick up the last of the, the third, well. right? The, the, right. So, in other words, the would say it's different that you could move the one to the other, the one, the third one with the other two. If you've already removed the first right. two, the right? Okay, now go on. Badak ame esrim ama vlo matzamai. Okay, with one search the 20 amas in the area. Okay, and didn't find anything. What's the status? Amar Rav Menashe Bar Yemir. He says his follows Amar Rav in the name of Rav. Shkunat Kvarot. We must declare that. Don't we need to declare it a Jewish cemetery area? My Tama. What's the reason? Amar Reish Lakish. Okay, Ila Matzu V'Tiharu Et Eretz Yisrael. Again, he gives the same answer that was given. Okay, they remove, they have, since that permission was already granted to remove, we remove it and we do it so that all the graves are going to be there. Okay, all right. Now, a new mission, Matnitin. Okay, now in this mission, what, what do we find? Okay. <clears throat> Finally, an answer to our doubtful uh, Okay. All right, so what happens? Matnitin. Ko safek negaim betchila tahor. Okay, when we have a question, says the Mishnah, of, of questionable status of tzara'at in this situation, at the initial, okay, initially, we're going to declare tahor. Okay. Ad shalom niskak v'tumah. Until the person has not been, I'm going to say, officially <laughs> declared Tame. Okay? So it may take the week, it could take longer than a week. Okay? Mishin is kak vatuma. Once the Kohen has officially declared the person, okay, to Tame, Sveko, any doubt then, Tame. It's right into Tame. So this is now our case. Okay. That we had where Okay. So Gamaris initially asks, Mina Hani Mila, on what is the basis, or can we find any Torah basis for this, that the Mishnah is declaring this situation? Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav, in the name of Rav, Amar Kra, based on the Pasuk, it says, Lataharo o Litum o. Okay, that's the language in the Pasuk. Since the Pasuk indicates that the Kohen must make his decision either to declare the person Tahor or Tame, and Tahor is said first, Ihachi, okay, that would seem to be the preferred almost designation. Ihachi, if that's the case. Afilu mission is kakvatuma. Shouldn't that also apply then, even if the person has been declared Tame? But the Kohen, the but the Kohen has seen, seen him, okay, for at least. Says the word Tame. Right, and has declared him. Right. Okay. Nami sveiko taho. That may be. The question is anything that then is, if it's a doubt status, should be considered taho. In other words, he had one spot, but perhaps now a second spot. See. We're going to get to that in a second. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Ella, rather, 
ki itman, when that was said, in other words, that, that uh, explanation that Rav Yehuda gave in the name of Rav, okay, the Rav Yehuda Amar Rav, aha itman, it was said considering the following circumstances. That's how I'm explaining it. Im baheret kadma ah, if the spot of change of color of skin, okay, came before an issue of the hair, okay, which you and the hair be turning white, okay, so you needed, if I remember correctly, at least two hairs, I think, right. all right, all right, tame, then he's rendered tame. First, first you have the white spot in the then hair. Then the hair came the, second, right? The hair grows out of the spot. Right. Ve'im se'ar lavan kodim lebaheret, but were there two hairs to come first, and then afterwards you saw this this spot tahor, it would be tahor safek, okay tame, but if it's a questionable, then for another it's tame. V'Rabbi Yoshua Amar kehe. Now, I want you to know, I looked read through art school. I read through Koren. Both of them have long notes, especially Koren on this phrase. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go with art scroll. Okay. And say Kehe implies that the color of the spot was faint. Right. Okay. And the discoloration from the Baharis to the skin. Is very K -A generally means it became a lesser degree of whiteness. I yeah, mean, the spot has to be. We're going to see how they define it in a moment, okay? But that's why I'm I decided uh, to go with Art Scroll's explanation that the color of the spot, okay, had faded in some. Why the shade of pale? Okay. It never got faint. Is what it said. Okay, my K. What do we mean? When we said that Rabbi Yehoshua said that, now Amar Rav Yehuda kehe v'tahor. Okay, it means the color of the spot was faint. In other words, it wasn't clear enough to to clearly declare him. Okay, let's say it's a him, uh, tame, and therefore it would be tahor. V'dilma kehe v'tame. Okay, but perhaps even though it was slightly Faint, the person should be considered Tame, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav, Amar Krak. Again, citing our Pasuk, the Taharo, O the Tam O. Okay, to make him Tahor or to make him Tame, Ho'il Upatach Bohakatu, the Tahara, Tehila. Okay, so clearly the preference of Rav Yehuda in the name of Rav. As if the Kohen has the option to, when they declare, the preference would be, if you can, to declare the person Tao. Okay? What? Right, right. Okay? <clears throat> and if it's a doubt, if the Kohen has a doubt, okay, that's the whole point. That's so the, if, saying, with the exception, give it the benefit of the doubt. But but notice it did it made it very clear with the example of which came first the well, spot no, or the hair. That hairs. case specifically, okay. the guy the, the guy walks into the kohen. He's got the hairs and he's got the spot. So the kohen says, "Which came first? The guy says, "Tell you the truth, I don't know." In that case, they declare him tummy. That's a different than the, the situation. Famous. In other words, in many cases. You give the guy the benefit of the doubt, but when it comes to the sequence issue, that's a that different situation. That is the case we learned earlier of a muhlat a suffix. Okay. That's what the Rush is trying to say. Really? All right. All right. That that's they want to connect. It. A, they want to connect. Clearly, Saras, it. it's a question of which came first. And that you can't determine anything. Right. Okay. okay, let's go on. Okay, Matnitin. Okay, since we talked about now all of these, it's very clear that a number of these Mishnaya towards the end of the parak 
are not necessarily uh, connected. Okay. Well, we talked about Saras. Well, that's an effort to. That's like going like that. Okay. <laughs> that's what we're doing now, Bob. <laughs> that's this next mission. Okay. Beshivad rachim bodkin et hazav in seven situations. Okay. One examines the. Okay. Clarifies. The second week. Hazav. Okay. Right now. Remember, where the whole implication seems to be here that step number one, the person has something, uh, right? Step the second time, there's another visualization of something. Now, what happens then? Okay, that's going to be part of the question. Was it from an outside source or was it from an internal situation? Because if it happens again a third time, okay, then there's even more uh, that has to be done. Okay, all right. So what happens? So the Mishnah wants to tell us, right? Ad shalom is kak laziva until one has not been clearly determined as having this flow. All right, that's the connection I would make with the previous Mishnah. Okay whether there was determination of the person's status. Okay. Could this flow have occurred because of something being eaten or something having been drunk? Could it be based on something that it carried or some sort of jumping movement or some sort of illness? Okay, some sort of, okay. All right, some having seen something, perhaps uh, art school suggested, if I remember correctly, a woman in some situation, right? Uba hear her, or because he was uh, thinking about uh, having a evening, uh, some evening thoughts, okay? Uh, all right. It's called an acid Mission is kak laziva. Once someone has clearly been determined, okay, in the status of a zav or ziva, ein bod kinoto, then we no longer examine. Okay, what happens further? On so, let's say that the first flow of this zav was by a mishap or an accident, usfeko, or there's a doubt about it, vishikvat zerao. Or it's a different kind of flow. Okay. Tmeim. Okay. We say they are tmeim. Shereglayim ledavar. Because we seem to have some sort of proof. Hamake et chaveron. Okay. If one strikes his name, vaamduhu lamita. Okay. And the, I call them doctors, determine, okay that he is not going to survive that wound, okay? Okay, but it becomes less severe for him, all right? He In other words, he does, does begin to uh, improve, re recuperate, right? But afterwards he has a uh, setback. setback, thank you. Okay, and instead then dies in that situation, chayav, then the person who struck him, committed the wound would be considered guilty of the person's death. How long does it work? Uh, we, does that's it a matter? good question, but the Gemara is not going to address it. It's not going to. Be. No. Okay. Rabbi Nechemya Omer, patur shiraglayim ledavah. Rabbi Nehemiah disagrees with Tanakama there and says, no, the person should be exempt. And he gets it's, it's, okay. it's realistic to think that he got better. Than Since he got better, doesn't it, the yeah. implication could be that he may have died from something else. And not because of the war. And wound. not because of the war. Well, and they don't know. They go for months. Right. They don't know. But right? Okay, Gemara. Now. What happens? Menahani Mili, what's the basis, Torah, for this? 
Amar Rabbi Nassan, says Rabbi Nassan, Amar Kra, Vahazav et Zovo. Okay, so we're talking about this kind of flow from this person. The Raya Shlishit, okay, when it comes to the third sighting, okay, Itkish Linekeva, then they made it associate, associated it to the status of a woman, okay. Meaning that even if you right. could attribute it to something, something else, else that, nevertheless, he still has to be satisfy the requirement of regarding tuma, regarding an offering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, vahatanya. But aren't we taught elsewhere in a brayta? Rabbi Eliezer Omer he says, bishlishit bod kinato, that when it comes to the third sighting, you still need to examine and check uh, with the person. But when there's a fourth sighting of this flow, that's when you don't, okay, examine. Ela, right, but what? What are they arguing about? How to darshan the word et in regards to bhazav et zovo, okay? That's what they're arguing about. Rabbi Eliezer darish etim. The Rabbi Eliezer does darshan the word et as, as if it is includes another, an actual flow, okay? An actual flow, right? That's what he does. Darshan etim, rabbanan lo darshe etim. But the rabbis do not darshan that et to include it as as a as a an additional flow, all right. On so usfeko, that's where we'll pick up tomorrow, on top of samach vav. No, because I mean, once had the shaila asked about that, and I was informed that in certain Jewish cemeteries, they will permit it so long as there are holes drilled underneath the bottom of the, of the concrete vault, okay? Because that still allows for some uh, earth. To My mother-in-law is in, buried in, in most of the cemeteries outside of Baltimore. They also bury in vaults. I saw the brush, I call a rabbi of there's yes. another opinion. Okay, so that's that's one that's one opinion that you have to uh, drill through the bottom. Uh, okay, the other yeah I know the other opinion. Yeah. The cemeteries in South Florida don't allow that, but the Jewish cemetery in Lake Worth does not use vaults, and you don't even have to use a coffin if you don't. Okay, but there's another opinion that there are. I don't know if it is as accepted that says that because it's concrete, concrete is, is ultimately porous. Okay, which is like a kind of earth. Okay, because it's schwach, but that's what I'm saying. It's not as accepted. Okay, but it's still so. It's that's the. You can imagine. Uh, Ashley and Michael, I once had to go to a cemetery in Louisiana, in New Orleans. There, they have a 
a greater water table right, than even in Florida. <laughs> What's it? Good morning. Does somebody have a key to the kitchen so we can put? Yeah. All right. So you're locked it out of this morning. Hey. Do you want to just take it and yeah, or do you want me to? Okay. Yes, ma. Yes. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. You know, there's a, a stender, a small stender in the room that I put your name on it. Yeah, I know that. Oh, you know. Okay. Right, that's the name. Not this morning, I'm going to go home for breakfast. At this time, the yeah, window yeah. cleaners are up, should be there already uh -huh. to clean the windows for paper. We clean windows. Oh, give me a break. First, you're gonna have a whole sandwich, science, and friends. No, it's it's a fingerprint from my grandson. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I would leave them. You want to clean the windows? Because that's not doing the paper. That's the that's the that's the that's the that's the Right, right. 